Welcome back to the LCS Countdown. And not too long, Team Liquid will be facing off against 100 Thieves. But before that, we're looking at another set of tier lists, this time from the mid lane. Mark, mid lane has long been considered one of the most important roles on Summoner's Rift, but it feels like this year the role itself is going through a bit of an evolution. Right. I don't think it's historically any less important. When you look at it, it's it's the most important role on the map. It's so hard to win a championship without a great mid laner. The, the one you maybe point out as like the worst was Huki, who was top four at his time and the best roamer in the whole split. So you do need a great mid to actually contest. And while I think the important variables have changed, it's not quite as lane dominant, there still are some really key metrics to look at. Yes, yeah, such as your synergy with your jungler, super important, your champion pool. And right now it's all about just giving your lane up to help everybody else out. And it looks really good because when you find a roam, you actually get a scoreline, your team gets ahead. But if you don't get anything, you're setting yourself behind, your team gets nothing. So it's really easy, I think, to tell what the upper echelon of mid laners are and the ones that are not getting those kills. Uh -huh. or all right, well, with this shift of metrics, now I want to take a look at both of your tier lists and see who tops the tables. I think it will come oh, as we're no so surprise standard. Yeah. to anyone. There's a lot of alignment here, but Niski, of course, is in that number one spot, unanimous for the both of you. 11-0 season, I think it's hard to argue with any Cloud9 member. Yeah, Niski has been a powerhouse. He's been playing super relevant champions as well, the Kiana, the Zoes, even Vagar as well. So not only does he bring something that has a lot of agency, but his synergy with Black Labyrinth is insane. You find both of them across the map just hand in hand crushing everyone. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is we're talking about what's important for mid laners now. It's about getting your entire team ahead, not just you. I don't care if you have a 10 CS lead anymore. I care that, you know, on Zoe, he roamed up to top and bot lane and snowballed with kills and helped support his other teammates. And I think that's what he does better than anyone else is he converts the roams that he does make into positive trades for his entire team. That K plus A at 15, it's always been a very pretty stat for Niski yes. and generally points to him getting out of the lane jumping down the list to Bjergsen always a part of the conversation for best mid laner in the LCS you both agree he's number three and I like that he's always trying to find new ways to redefine himself I think things like the Orn like the Maokai mid that he's tried shows that he's willing to try to put himself more in the support position hopefully roaming around the map to set up kills with his team maybe not executing on it quite as well as Niski but still trying to play that play style and allow Broken Blade to be what feels like the primary carry for TSM now. and I think that play style also allows Dardoch to have more of his niche picks because Bjergsen's willing to take a backseat play those supporting champions let your jungler shine when it's time for him to shine but if he has to bust out that Syndra yeah, still nasty. he will still body you yeah that's fair that's fair so we got everything from Ornn and Maokai to Syndra yes. with this player and that why that is why he'll still remain in the top three next up let's talk Pobelter quite obviously a recent uh, re-addition to yeah. the LCS yeah. uh, but you have him as high as seventh here mark whereas Crumbs you got him down in that tenth slot so Crumbs coming to you first why is it that he's in last? So he only has two games, and I feel yeah. like the sample size is just too small for him. The man was not playing mid lane until a few weeks ago. He was playing coach. He just runs into he was a new team. playing coach. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> runs into a new team where no one looks good on CLG right now. So I feel like the sample size is just way too small. If I could give him a score, it would be an N slash A for him. It's gotcha. just no, not quality. That's okay, fair enough. Completely fair, yeah. I think for me, he played the number one and number two teams uh, his opening week. We haven't seen him yet so far this week. Weekend. So he had a really tough showing. Uh, he did have some decent laning in that time before they kind of got smacked around. He died a ton, but I appreciate that he was trying to make plays for the team. A lot of aggressive shuffles in. Uh, so like you said, probably a little out of practice. Haven't seen too much out of him, but I do expect him to slot somewhere around here. Right. After getting enough games. The the piece that just jumped out to me is the fact that you said, I saw him trying to make plays, and that at least feeds into the metrics of what we, we want for a mid laner, right? Yeah, yeah. He was trying to do things for the benefit of his team and set other people up, maybe not always working out. But now, let's roll back to the beginning of this conversation, which was about the way that the role has evolved, yes, over time, but also the importance of a mid laner to a team's chances at winning the LCS mm -hmm. split. If Huhi is considered to be the worst mid laner that's ever won a split, and at the time was considered to be a top four mid laner, what's that line now? Where, you know, what level of mid laner do you need to be able to win a championship currently in the LCS? I feel like for me, if I like put a line on here, I put it right under Golden Glue. Okay. I think Golden Glue and up, 
I can see them on championship winning teams. Maybe not all of them as the primary carry, but on C9, we saw Golden Glue reach a finals when they paired him up against Bjergsen with Sven Skaren backing him up. So if you have a good team around him, I'm not saying necessarily Golden Guardians is a championship contender, but you could win. But yeah, we're put, talking mid laners. You put Golden Glue on C9, I think he, you can still win a championship with him. I mm. think that's that's about where currently at the level people are playing it. I would say, yeah, Golden Glue in the wow. right situation. Right, you might probably. be able to put me in the mid lane though on C9. And <laughs> All right, maybe C9 is a little, little I don't know. I don't know. Stacked. I don't know. They're pretty good. <laughs> they might have broken the premise of the question. I've seen your ass, Jungle. I'll save comments for later. Why do you do that? To me? All right. I'm gonna. Uh, we're playing another game tonight. Chris. My line is way higher than that, by the way. Oh, I got, okay. I got higher standards than this. Oh, look at you. Uh, I'm going actually cutting it off at number four. Wow. Yeah. Uh, cutting it off. That at actually is four. a significant jump in a ten position. Yeah. I thought about this a lot, and I think that these players are way better at sacrificing their own champion pool for the team. Whereas down the line, you're seeing a lot more necessity of, I need this pick, you have to draft this early for me. Yes, exactly. And when you're looking to win a championship, a lot of the times you don't need that dependence. You need somebody that can just take agency without any other resources. That's where I draw the line. Jensen, Bjergsen, Poe, and Niski. Well, fact of the matter is, while many of these mid laners might be capable of winning a championship, they will have to do it with the given circumstances mm -hmm. and the pieces around them in the LCS. As we turn to game one of the day, though, Papa weighed in on the progress 100 Thieves are making in response to Mark's proposed roster oh, no. move. Oh, boy. I think one of our big pain points when it comes to stage games has been being able to translate kind of Zix's aggressive mindset in and towards... Uh, the gameplay we're seeing on stage. And that's something that I think we weren't able to do in some of our more disappointing games. So the fact that we've been able to do that pretty routinely in our last three says that something's working when it comes to our preparation. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm really aware of the kind of the community perception and they're always going to be about wins first. We were super eyes open when we brought Tommy onto the lineup over other players with more LCS experience. We looked at the upside, we looked at the intangibles that he brings and we still see those to this day. The job on him is to show the tangible, which is that performance on game day, which is such a small part of the week, but such an important one. He looked good yesterday, and we're hoping that he can continue, continue to translate uh, what, he's, what he's preparing. I think it's interesting because I've been more impressed by Ryoma than my initial uh, assumptions were when it's right. like Ost mid laner coming over. How is he going to be? I've seen him take some really difficult trades and do well. Uh, it's what, you know, what Papa's saying about the tangibles and making sure that you can do that day after day in the consistency. I think the most impressive thing about him was actually the game where he lost lane to Bjergsen so hard, yet still found a way to make yeah, an impact in team fight. So impressive. Super cool to watch that kid grow, and it sounds like Papa and 100 Thieves have every intent of continuing to invest in him. Let's get your predictions on the board for the day. We will see updated scores as yesterday's prediction. What? Uh, yes, actually did really service Mark now moving into second position. Only one prediction behind yeah. you coming. Yeah, he had a big day. I had a bad day yesterday, but why are you going against Team Liquid. I think I looked at things wrong, because that should not be 100, 100. <laughs> As much as I'm pretending I'm their GM today, that's not right. I, uh -oh. I, think I might have submitted them wrong. Okay, <laughs> I'll believe I'm that. I'm not crazy. Uh, I like that you're open to, up to it being your yeah. screw up, though. So, uh, like, uh, I don't think this was All right, well, technically, it's before the game is played. So are you officially declaring yeah, that you're making a, over. a TL prediction? Pot okay. swap me back to Team Liquid. A, a TL prediction for Mark. I'm taking my Papa Smithy suit off. I'm back to Mark. Okay. Well, that means that you guys are in total alignment, but this is interesting to me because again, it doesn't, it doesn't to me sound like game one is super lopsided, and it even doesn't sound to me like game two. We talk about a hot and cold Dignitas against a FlyQuest, who, yes, is our current number two, but only a game or two ahead of everyone else. Yeah, you guys are you're yeah. calling you're calling the shots all one side today. Well, it feels like from the matches that we saw yesterday, the highs that the teams that we're predicting to win just fell a lot stronger than what we're seeing out of the teams that we predicted against. So, for example, Team Liquid's high felt better than 100 Thieves is because of okay. how decisive that win was. And I think for me, where 100 Thieves is weak, we have or excuse me, Team Liquid's weak with with uh, tactical stepping in. We haven't seen that really where 100 Thieves exploit. Gotcha. If this was a substitute top laner versus 100 Thieves, I'd be a lot more concerned than a bot laner. Interesting, interesting. Well, we are about to head into that first game of the day, so I do want to get win conditions on the board. Team Liquid, that's going to be Crumbs going. All right, pretty quick. I want to get impact on that matchup with agency. I don't want to see him on the Kale versus set matchup. I want to see him on the set. I want to see him on the Orn, something that lets him make the plays he wants. And then a strong 2v2 for Broxa and Jensen, because I think the key to the early game will be strike Ryoma and Meteos early. Make sure you put Meteos down and then use the advantages your laners are getting. 
snowball the game, get an easy win. Well, so just as you tell me you don't think 100 Thieves are gonna do it, <laughs> I'm gonna make you tell me how they do. Well, it's funny, because it's what I said I don't think they're good at, which is attacking bot lane. That's Great. actually what I want them to do. I want them to ban the MF. I think it's one of the easiest marksmen to contribute in in team fights, just with pressing R. Yep. Uh, I want to pick a skilly bot lane, so things like Zyra Khan uh, into like a Nautilus or, or something like that, where you can still have kill threat and it's a bit more of a skill match. And then camp it. Wow. I want to camp Everything's lane. going bot lane, I want man. all bot lane because, like you know, Crumbs is saying about targeting mid-jungle and how impact's so good in top side on the weak side of maps, I feel like those might be a little bit harder to exploit, so I want to attack the new guy. And Meteos is really good about finding creative packs. Meteos found first blood in the bot lane yesterday on that Rek'Sai, side, so we'll see if he can do something similar today to take down Team Liquid. Will Tactical go 2-0 in the LCS, though? I think that's the real question on everyone's mind, making those stats <laughs> better look better. Better than Double better, Mark. He's better than Double it. There it is. With that, we're throwing it out to the arena for the call. Crazy talk over here, Dash. Thank you very much for the toss. I am Rivington Bizon the third here along with Joshua Jat Leesman. And we are ready to get the second day of week six underway here. And we're going to be seeing 100 Thieves go up against Team Liquid, who's having a bit of a resurgence, finding how that team's supposed to work here. It is the second half of the split, and there's not much time to do more of that. Yeah, it's been quite an up and down year for both of these teams. And even coming into just this last week, when we heard the news that Doublelift was going to miss it during illness, everyone kind of started thinking, hey, maybe this is the time for panic for Team Liquid. But yeah. they have that very convincing win against TSM yesterday with Tactical being able to kind of plug and play an AD carry. And you do remember that they've won four consecutive championships. So now it's become Team Liquid are the favorites again, despite walking into this matchup against mm. another five and six team. Very true. They still have that fan base behind them. They always believed. They assembled the X-Men squad coming in this yeah. week as well. Our band's coming in pretty fast here from both teams as the bottom of the map does get hit. We heard the analyst test talking a bit about that as how they would like to see that as a focus. You see those first few bands definitely now at the bot lane. There's a Felios as well. Yeah, Orn band. Yumi was actually banned in all four LCS stage games yesterday. Uh, so that is something that showed a lot of success last week. But because as we see just all of the AD carry bands, there's a decent chance that the Yumi does go through on this one. It'll depend on what 100 Thieves decides to go with here. I think it was Cody's son that I talked to last week when they played against Golden Guardians who actually didn't know let that. the Yumi through. Okay. And Golden Guardians got Olaf and Yumi. So Thieves weren't too keen on banning the Yumi. It looks like they won't do it this time either. Liquid will pick up set to start things off. And Impact is going to have that playmaker on the top side of the map. Yeah, I mean... For 80 carry bands, Set is a very logical first pick in this situation. Impact has been an absolute monster on this pick when he's played it, even though, sure, he did lose a game with it against EG in Week 5. His last two set games, 5-0-7 against Utah and 5-1-5 against TSM. It's the type of champion Impact can thrive on. A goal up against Aatrox, so they'll definitely be duking it out in the top lane. Strong bottom for Cody as he gets a tap on the shoulder there from Ryoma on his right side. Looks like they'll be seeing if he gets that yet. No, nope. they go for the tank in the mid. We do see that from TSM, but it's TS real overall. So this actually puts Tactical in a bit of a unique situation. Obviously, small sample size of just going off of mm -hmm. NA picks in patch 10.4, so yesterday. But all 580 carries that have been played on this patch in NA are now off the board. Four bands and one <laughs> pick. So it puts Tactical on having to play something uh, a little bit different. Oh, sorry, Var Varus is also available on top of the Callista. So uh, yeah. it puts him in to what Mark just said on the deck, on the desk, one of those more skilly matchups. And Callista Tarek is a lane that has had a little bit more prevalence actually in the LCK because you can still sometimes be strong in leaning phase, but then have that stronger team fight presence with the Tarek ultimate. Yep. We did see this as well in Academy just a, a night ago or so. Hail of Blades plus the Hail of Blades, Hail of Blades is here in the mid lane as well. So we'll see if Team Liquid decides to pick that up for Jensen. Come time. Yumi still getting hovered around. See if we have the Cat Scratch Fever coming in here for 100 Thieves. It will be jumping around. They have a yeah. pretty slippery butt side of the map here for Cody Sun. Yeah, and Ez Stun. Ezreal Yumi is generally the combo you pick with Yumi because you can play the lane still fairly well despite Yumi not being a strong early laner. And then what we're going to be looking for in phase two of 100 Thieves composition is another really good Yumi companion for teamfights. 
there's a chance they don't need it because they can just throw the Yumi into Aatrox, and that's already kind of an insane combo in itself. But yeah. you're, you're, you are also leaving the door open for something like a Silas or an Olaf to be in the rest of the competition. I like that they're kind of leaving the junglers, whatever they want here. It's like, yeah, you can ban each other out, but Ezra, or I'm sorry, Meteos and Brox are still going to be able to play something that matters. Yeah. So get these mids out, get the bottom lane out. As we were hearing the analyst desk talk about before and what are the final bans here that Team Liquid feels are a priority, it is going to be starting at the jungle. There's an Olaf. Yeah, just making sure that they don't get that Yumi Olaf synergy that we just <laughs> talked about uh, makes Olaf kind of a crazy late game carry. Still a lot of options open for 100 Thieves here because they could do a little bit of a dive composition with just an Ezreal fending for himself, or they can think of more of a poke composition with a split pushing Aatrox. Uh, I would say that the split pushing Aatrox is a little bit difficult just because they're up against a set, but with the bands coming through as well, being Zoe, still not completely sure what 100 Thieves is going for. Maybe if that was a gangplank to split with for someday. But yeah, it yeah. does seem like he can get into these fights this time with the Aatrox. And we heard Papa Smitty uh, just chatting about how that kind of six aggression is trying to be manifested within what the team does on the Rift. And be able to see that with their next pick, as you were saying. Dive could be a way to win. Final ban is Cassiopeia as they head over towards Ryoma right in the mid. And uh, we did see an AP Shivana coming out in Academy. <laughs> now I'm just saying. It would be something. <laughs> That's a very serious looking Meteos face on the hover. Yep. Uh, as a not serious looking face. And Gragas is uh, Go uh, as as being, Yeah, he's already played it five times to a record of three and two. Perfect. So when 60% of your wins are with Gragas and he's available in phase two of the draft. Yep. I actually saw Broxa making some big plays on the flank, Gragas, just yesterday. So he knows what he's up against here. But what does he want to play? Sejuani? Going back to the boar. That is a brawly team if they throw in that Sejuani. That Boy. is a very big team right now. What do they finalize it with? You have a lot of things getting pushed around, getting locked yeah. up. I mean, Azir would actually look pretty sweet here. I think Oriana would also just kind of Ooh. just lead to their... That's a hard team to Ori. It, it, it's really hard to hit stuff with Oriana. Jensen is such a good Oriana, though. <laughs> they need some AP. They need some AP. <laughs> Syndra, all okay. right, there's the pick. Syndra's actually probably better, especially as a blind mid laner that uh, Jensen can use to try and beat literally anything Ryoma plays. A lot of times you actually see Save Syndra pick picked uh, fourth pick on red side because yeah. it is so hard to counter pick, but uh, yeah, I mean, even if Ryoma ends up playing a victor into it, it's going to be a tough lane. Tristan is going to be the same way. Yeah, there we go. It's going to be a difficult lane for Ryoma, regardless. We'll keep an eye on that. You can see the team now chatting away of who will be able to get the early game on this. They're both are decently aggressive. Yeah. Doesn't it seem like the champion portraits are also color coded for the teams? Like it you does. have kind of like the red, orange, 100 Thieves team and like the blue, purple team, Liquid they're team. They're facing off against each other, yeah. too. Except for Set. He's like, I don't want to look at you. It's okay. okay. Yeah. He's more like, just, I guess he is red. If he was He's red under 100 Thieves, it would be yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like it. That's what my analysis has become after these drafts. Uh, I, I do like the team fighting that Team Liquid has put together, though, and I'm really interested to see if Tactical can have a good mid or late game impact on the Callista. It is a pick that I think has been slept on a little bit. Okay. Uh, it has surprisingly high mid game durability. It's one of the things that happened with one of the recent Callista buffs. The health per level actually got put really, really high. So since she is a short range marksman, especially with the Taric, you can mm -hmm. kind of get in there a little bit more on Callista in the mid game. Not worry about it. Jump around, get those dazzles in with the help of the Taric. I'm excited to see what happens this game. Most teams have seven games left at five and six right now. Full wins would leave you at 12 and six for one of these teams. Yeah. Just imagine that. TL at 12 and six. Cloud9 is at 11 wins right now. It has oh. been a topsy turvy yeah. season. No one's catching Cloud9. No way. I'm going to say that right now. <laughs> but Team Liquid is still hoping to put it together by the end of the split. Absolutely. It has been such a strange and difficult year for Team Liquid so far. Not having Broxa until week four 
and then losing double lift in week yeah. six to an illness that's been more severe than anything he's had in his entire playing career. He said he's never missed a scrim week due to sickness until this week. So the team really just keeps getting dealt some bad hands, but can they overcome here and actually move their second half record to 3-0? and Because so far they've beaten Dignitas and TSM during the start of the second round robin. Well, it seems to be gelling for him already. Tactical is having a decent bot lane season in Academy, mostly on the misfortune as we saw yesterday. Yeah. But to kind of now put that in with the synergy that wasn't working before and have it work, that means other teams don't exactly know what TL is going to be able to bring to the table. They're not watching Tactical's games all the time from the LCS, so he be able to, is able to bring a bit of diversity that has kind of added a fresh new life to the team, and it's helping out. Yeah. It, it's a lot of Roxa too. Yeah, it's kind of, it's this weird thing where at least watching TL yesterday, uh, it allowed you to appreciate how good Impact, Broxa, Jensen, sure. and Core JJ are because they kind of clearly weren't trying to play this bot lane centric, this is the only way Team Liquid plays style. And they've kind of been saying this a little bit all year, even though their year has been so strange because of rosters of like, hey, ultimately, as we get a nice start. Oh my God, stun's gonna go down. There's no way he lives there, <laughs> Ren first. That means it's a reset. That's gonna be big damage on the Cody son. I don't think he has to use anything else. But instantly, stun oh. goes down. So, okay. Scrap what I was saying earlier, we can get to that later. Ooh. That setup was them camping the brush. Hunter doesn't know if there is a pull or not. Right. And they kind of think they're safe, but as soon as stunt pops out, that's your mistake. Because once you get CC'd, you can't pop back in. So it's the freest kill TL has ever had. Because stunt was like, basically Hunter Thieves thought, oh, they're doing a big time pull on red. Let's push the wave. Therefore, I need to auto attack on Yumi. Yep. That's exactly what Tactical and Core JJ were waiting for. And that is just such an incredible start for Tactical's Callista. There's so much damage too, if you think about it. You have the Taric auto attacks coming in, after yeah. ability, after shock. A lot of stuff going down there. We've seen Guardian quite a bit lately, but that's gonna offer out some more damage to have that rune in lane. Someday it starts to add his aggression towards top side as we should see this fight go back and forth quite a bit. Yeah, generally speaking, Set doesn't lose lane if you're playing him no. properly, which is why yeah, yeah. <laughs> so many people are willing to first pick him on blue side. But the early wave is in favor of Someday, and I think that's just generally conservative play by Impact because he knows where Brox is, right? They're doing this counter jungle of the blue side uh, thanks to how much dominance they got over that bot side uh, with Tactical and Core JJ at level one. Jensen making sure Ryoma is pushed in mid as well. Medio is still going to be off and doing what he can here. He did use Predators to get back out into lane to make sure he could get there quicker. As TL was in his jungle. So Bronx is off and running with a very good start on three buff here. Now yes. in the back pocket of Jensen looking for something. I mean, it's just such a good start for Team Liquid overall. Uh, we'll see how the rest of this game ends up playing out, but like someday... Somebody would be in danger of actually losing summoner spells here if he doesn't run immediately back towards his dry brush. Yeah, yeah. force it out. Yeah, and Ryoma ooms himself while they don't have river control, and the wave actually could have been frozen. Jensen's actually opting not to freeze because he's also going to want to get his early recall off. Yep. But basically, like the overall state of the map is just. Really, really good for Team Liquid right now. So for all that Hunter Thieves has talked about yesterday about, hey, we had our like a great early game. I don't know if they're able to have a great early game after this start uh, with the way these lanes are set up. Broxa controlling the one spot he needs to right now is Impact is trying to crash the wave. Ooh, yep. instant flash on the Arctic Assault. I like the timing on that wave as TL kind of... Pushes in someday. Someday feels comfortable just outside the turret and they use that. Maybe a rinse and repeat after that flash goes Ooh. down. And already Impact has quite a bit of aggression on that wave and he's gonna push into the turret. He may just get a free back on this as well. Oh man, he's then trying to scout out Meteos because he knows he's generally strong enough. Wow, even better. Yeah, he knows exactly where Meteos is. Oh boy. So now it's up to 100 Thieves to find themselves in the shadows already. Medio yeah. is trying to sweep out some wards. If they can create that fog of war, maybe they can start getting a few ganks back and stop this tempo of the game. Tactical and Cody Sun 
in a 1v1, more like a 2v1 as Stump pops off there. Yeah, it's not really about aggression from 100 Thieves right now as much as it is about loss minimization mm -hmm. since they lost that kill early on and Broxa was able to get double Scuttle Crabs. Yep. With Tactical Low though, this is the window where they're able to get something back maybe. They're feeling like the prey here on this Predator. Okay. Nice little dodge out. A good trade in damage. It gives them a little bit of aggression on the lane. It is a cannon wave, so they may be able to play it with some mystic shots and prowling projectiles. But low mana there for Cody's son and yeah. stunt was really just a, kind of a, a breath of relief for Meteos, but they're instantly pushed back. Yeah, it's, it's pretty hard to gank for a Yumi Ezreal lane. <laughs> I think we saw that now. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, jumps off, hops on. Like, what is Yumi Ezreal really going to do for gank assist? Versus the Callista Tarek, who have stuns and slows. A little bit dangerous here. Medios is there to cover. Oh, he just showed. They might consider. Uh, he just dive. used his arcane shift, has it up once again. Yeah. They're gonna have to follow through. Damn it, Broxa comes up as he pushes three off the turret with the help of Liquid's bot lane. Well, TL was definitely ready to play against you. I think we can say that. Very willing to play bot side, even though double lift isn't there. They're just doing it with tactical and core JJ. That was a situation where like maybe 100 Thieves would have had a better chance if all three people just stuck under turret, but they kind of knew that they were in kill range regardless. And yeah. they kind of just got the worst of both worlds, letting themselves get caught in between the turrets. It's interesting to see, Jat. You say that Ezreal and Yumi is a hard lane to gank for. It also should be a hard lane to gank. Yes. I mean, it seems like TL, with the first brush whack they had on the bot side, and then just able to follow up there behind the turret, 100 Deeps cannot seem to find safety in a lane that should be very slippery. Yeah, I mean, you kind of want to say that it's just because of what happened to level one, right? Like, yeah. stunt died, tactical got an early item lead, mm -hmm. uh, and from there, they're always kind of on the back foot. Like, maybe Cody, Sun, and Stunt are actually just playing too aggressive, and that made them trade too much, so yep. that they were more gankable. But overall, like, what a great early game for TL. Kind of, they had this similar type of early game yesterday against TSM, where they, they kind of started running away with it. Oh, poor JJ already able to roam in and out a bit. Even in a minion wave, all of yeah. those casters, it doesn't even matter. They'll go for the fight. The shield and the heal from poor JJ's Tarek is just able to kind of rebuttal everything coming at him. Strangely enough, Riv, yes. uh, Core JJ actually duos a decent amount with Tactical. I watch Core JJ stream sometime, and sometimes when he's duoed, he is playing uh, with Tactical. So they have a little bit of inbuilt synergy already, just from being kind of on the same org and yep. playing together a little bit. And I think we're seeing a little bit of it here. I wonder if watching Core JJ support videos is kind of a prerequisite to solo <laughs> queue with him. <laughs> yes, to be like, set up the triangle, please. Make sure all of this happens. They're they're apart. They're apart. Engage. Yeah. If people haven't seen them as well, uh, Core JJ actually made some really good detailed how to support great. guides on his YouTube. You can just search like Core JJ support guide. Uh, episode one yeah. is my favorite one of the series, but he has I think four of them at this point. So check them out at some point after this game if you want to see some of the stuff Core JJ does his support. It's really great. All little simple things. We add them together, and it really advances the game. Yeah. A little bit of love for Meteos here, expecting someday to receive a gank from Broxa, but he's happily farming Meteos in spot jungle right now as they kind of just have the eye on where 100 Thieves has been a bit ever since Meteos was on that top side of the jungle, timing his camp since then. And no real pressure here on yeah. Jensen, right? Almost been pushed back quite a bit. This is actually really interesting though, where 100 Thieves is trying to do the Rift Herald without the bot lane swapping and without mid lane or bot lane having priority. So it's like, they're trying a Rift Herald sneak. The instant someone goes to check, he has to pull off of it, and yeah. it ends up being a bit of waste of time. And that's exactly what happened. Like, Broxa and Jensen moved over for mid lane, and now he's pushed off. Quickly goes up. Herald icon is still there, but it's not in the pit. Yeah. Question mark. Still gets uh, Scuttle as well. He has had full control of these Scuttle Crabs in the, in the river as the team moves back and forth, helping for JJ on the bot side as well. Teleports. Coming up in mid, looks like Ryoma will time that with a back. Just taking stock of the CS, about a 20 CS lead in that bot lane, a few waves, or a wave, I should say, in mid. And top is pretty controlled altogether. Yep. And right now, uh, so th this will be a little curious. Normally the play is that the bot lane recalls and then runs up towards Rift Herald for a potential fight. But there is such a small amount of pressure that the Rift Herald isn't going to get contested and actually 
they can just run straight back towards the bottom lane as the Rift Herald gets soloed. So absolutely no pressure lost whatsoever for this Herald secure by TL. Feels nice to keep that on the map, especially for bot side. If you're a marksman, you can just go back to farming and know you already have advantage in that mm -hmm. lane. You don't have to leave to fight the river. Yeah. Nice pace. You don't have to do anything too scary. Impact staying at this mark pretty much the whole time in the lane. We did see just a moment ago, Media was pushed up with someday, but Impact has had pretty much all the control. Quick Bramble Vest to start for him. We'll see if that pays off in this first fight. Shield comes through. Oh. Uh, we actually saw that happening. We're going to see someday now get hit up with the ultimate, but teleport comes in from Ryoma. Yeah, that'll hurt Ryoma's positioning on the wave. Overall, good gank by Broxa. Doesn't have to use ultimate. Uh, gets it with basically just his basic yeah. abilities. The... It almost feels like the win condition for 100 Thieves here, like, in the past. Like, the last time TL played 100 Thieves, it was someday solo killing Impact three times and going 7-0 on Aatrox that yep. allowed them to get the win. That was an Impact on game play. Very early on, switched off here. Court today, though, in River means Tactic gets jumped on. Oh, my God. He just starts 1v2ing. Eight yeah, the big final big. chapter. Oh, can they sign off on this one? Poor JJ, just a little short there. And they are going to be able to get out flashes and exhaust used from Cody Sun and Stunt and the ultimates on both of them. Tactical stance tall. Well, this is a bot lane slaughter. And this means that Broxa doesn't actually need to use Rift Herald to break the first turret. So TL's probably looking at like a 10 or 12 plate early game. Yeah. Because now with still two minutes left on the Rift Herald, Brox is going to be able to use that drop in mid or top lane after the bot lane rotates, and they can just four man another turret. It, it looks so comfortable right now, just kind of going through the motions on the side of TL. That'll be a cloud mountain is next. So we have Infernal or Ocean to change our rift. Coming up for our Soul Drake. Meteo is trying to get a little counter jungling back in yeah. here as they're falling behind quite a bit, but we haven't seen the 5v5s yet. So far, I think they're going to go in TL's favor, oh, yeah. but there's there could be a change. There are some. Wow and impact ult here on the side of 100 Thieves. Yeah, I mean, maybe once Cody Sun gets to two items and the Yumi has a Thieves and another healing amp item, would 100 Thieves be able to think about winning? But like for now, a lot of ifs. It's yeah. just, they are so far behind in all semblance of map pressure and gold and objectives. And it looks like Rift is going to be used top. They can probably just break this whole turret. Like, looking at the way the map is right now, Riv, uh, even though there's five plates here, they're going to be able to hit that turret down up top to, th to three plates before dropping the Rift Herald and probably get uh, two full turret takes beforehand. So watch what they do here where they'll just, you know, auto it down until it's at about two and a half plates and then drop yep. the Rift. For JJ being the one-man army in the river. Okay. We're just getting a little extra gold Boxing, here. You're supposed to drop the red. Yeah, they're doing a bit of uh, back and forth, but it looks like they should have one objective in this instance. Now everybody coming through the junglers. The map pressure's lost a bit, but the fight may go down for mid instead. Okay. Cody Sun's coming back over as well. So they'll get max plates, but not max turrets here. Uh, they're going to try and take this one. They have about 10 seconds for the charge. I guess this works too. So we got about one plate left. Check cash in on that as Tactical's able to get the last auto attacks in. Meteos possibly looking for a cast, but already used as you see it's on cooldown. And it looks like the big three ultimates they would be using are on CD here. But doesn't mean TL stops. There's our up. Yeah. I mean, Riv, maybe the best early game of the split by TL. It, it was started off with obviously such an incredible level one move that yeah. gave the bot lane a big advantage, and then. Jensen ain't losing that lane to Ryoma, and they have the set no. in top lane, so it's like, all right, we got three winning lanes. We arguably have, like, the impact Jensen. This is what we thought of Team Liquid before the year. Oh, yeah, every lane is just a winning lane, so Broxa will be able to go wherever he wants. Broxa hasn't accrued a large CS or level advantage over Meteos, but he's secured every objective, every scuttle crab, made the lanes yeah. effectively ungankable, and now they're up four and a half K. It's about sending the message. Yeah, you don't I know. will be here. Yeah, look at that. Up and to the right oh my goodness. for Team Liquid this game. And that is a hard hill for 100 Thieves to climb at this point. They are down about 5,000 gold as the mid lane looks to be tagged down one more time. Wave getting pushed in by Jensen. True Shot Barrage doing what it can, but it's not going to be enough. The outer turrets are falling right now. Ryoma pushes top. It doesn't look like they'll get engaged on by the side of 100 Thieves, though. 
Clean and quick to each lane they go. Top lane's the only one left standing. Looks like Tactical and Core JG will back, and we'll see them heading towards top side. This is this is the textbook yeah. win game. If this works out the way they do it, and they do just go top, top turret, down to Mountain Drake. It's kind of no wasting time between that, because yeah. it could be about two minutes. Absolutely. It's pretty straightforward in terms of the way they want to play the rest of this game out. We have 5,000 gold, and this... We, I know there's going to be all these discussions online now about TL and Doublelift, and I <laughs> I just can't wait to read them. And I think there are some compounding factors to go with this, where, like, if the team has a wake-up call, that's more than just Doublelift. And, like, there were definitely moments while TL was struggling where Impact was having some bad games. I mean, it was Impact who got solo killed by Someday during their last defeat. Right, in the previous fight. Uh, having game. the jungler there to run the rest of the map, though, like, this is really, I think, the first time Broxo looks more comfortable with the team. But TL just does look like TL again. Right. Uh, in a weird way, like, they're doing it without double lift, so... I, I do wonder if it's going to have... They're going to say it doesn't. Uh, publicly, I do wonder if this will have any effect on, like, the TL double if dynamic, right? Like, right. Uh, we can be very this successful. Isn't, this isn't a use or not use double. Yeah. This is just playing around that. Situation. Yeah, the good the good team work, you're still going to be happy to have double if back at a high level because we Absolutely. know that he's going to be the best player. But this is kind of proof that, hey, this is a good team. Drone tag. Oh, my word. Meteos, I want to have a meteoric downfall on that one. What? Yeah. He gets out with the help of Yumi as well. Someday he's going to be retreating, but he is also running to goal side of TL, so he needs to get himself out real quick. And it looks like they are now down after taking top turret. TL's ready for Mountain Drake. You just... You got to bring the house if you're going to gank set. <laughs> uh, they did, They brought a jungle Gragas with the Yumi and a fairly weak top lane Aatrox out against the pole. There's no way that was gonna work. I have a buddy who plays Zen, yeah. and he always takes fights with like 300 health. I'm like, no, no, yeah. no. He's like, this is exactly where I want. Don't worry, don't worry. Comes up with a kill every time, just like Liquid there in the mid lane. Okay. They take down Cody's son, yep. cleansing all. Well, at least Ryaoma got the turn. No perfect game today, Riv. Coming back. Yeah. Get a little bit of gold in their pocket. Uh, Gonna help finish some items. This turret's dead as well. Charge! Shelly is in. We can see the level difference across the map on the left side of your screen as a few more hits come in. Core JJ leading the charge with Broxa. Arctic assaulting just behind him. They have a big composition. Okay. They can kind of just taunt the engage and then take it if they want a final chapter across three, but it's not gonna matter. The damage has been delivered by Liquid once again as they are just taking down every member of 100 Thieves that tries to get in their way. They're making it look easy. <laughs> Four kills to zero, eight and a half minutes. And look at this gold. He's like, oh, bye. It never ends. He just uh -huh. came back, though. Yeah. Still doesn't have cleanse. That hurts. Thinking you could get out. See, Liquid's winning all these fights by having to use their ultimate. So you go in thinking you might have an, a slight edge, but it is not. You are pushed back off the edge, and Liquid takes your gold. Taking all the lunch money. Five to zero right now. Coming up on 20 minutes, and we're waiting for Baron as Infernal has already changed the rift. This is the nightmare game for Cody's son's Ezreal. It's like, all right, I'm going to be safe. I got a Yumi who will bring my heal and exhaust. I get to bring cleanse. I'm Ezreal. Things will be fine. Oh, can, by the it's way, not can you fine. grab a Mikhail's Crucible for me? Yeah, That please. will help. So I'll need that. Some some he'll grab anyways. Yumi grabs that up. A little more safety and yeah, the half difference. Half thousand gold more for tactical. That's bot diff. That is bot diff. This game. The bounty sit at 650 gold to be raked up here over on the side of hundred thieves. Where's the fight that they find though? Everything is just being sieged on so quickly. TL is choosing when to pull the trigger. Moving in a little bit with their wards here, Core JJ and Brox uh, as a team. These guys can't be taken down. No, they're so strong right now. And you can see Core JJ, look at this. He's got the Shirelli. I was just going to point that yeah. out. I mean, it does have good Ooh. heal shield amp, and he's got to zoom around with it. DP in. Here comes the Seer. Could shove back with Emperor's Divide or get in to shove to the turret as Meteos' stopwatch keeps him alive to fight another day. Gotta rotate everywhere though. There's quite a few things to think about. Minions going towards the mid lane. Someday does have teleport. 
But he can't get over that quick when the power is unleashed Run. by Jensen. Run! You can't do that kind of stuff. I mean, Mido actually can't do anything this game. So every time he tries to do something, he just gets reminded that he can't do anything uh, with the way TL has kind of set up the map. And they're never in one spot long enough yeah. for this Azir to get his damage down as well. Still a great pick right now, but TL's moving yeah. so quick and moving through the members of 100 Thieves so fast, they're never in one spot. Here, the do -si do here on the bottom lane. Showstopper. Oh, he's bringing time for Jensen yeah. over. Someday does have the World Ender on, but not going to get too much healing coming through. Misses the Haymaker, and he does not get the Super Soaker. Okay, nice job by Impact. Alt for Alt there, able to disengage and actually still be the person at higher health. Small victories, Silver Linux. Smite it away. Windows can smite. Okay. Two small victories in a row. We're getting there. One minute on to the Infernal. We're still waiting for some build up here onto the items. 380 on the man immune of Cody Sun out of 750 right now. So lacking quite a bit of power, and the spike will not be there for a while. Poor stunt this game. He only has generated uh, 758 of his 1,000 quest gold 21 minutes in. This may He may never get to his final sightstone upgrade uh, because no one on the team can get close enough for Yumi to harass right. for the gold. <laughs> get to the turrets. Tag the, tag the turrets. Anything you can get. 30 seconds on to Drake. TL now starts to move their team towards bot side after they have a pretty timely back that will get them all there 10 seconds ahead of time to place the vision. All of 100 Thieves are working on the top side of the map. You can see TL moving so quick. Wards are moved, they're in position, and someday, gonna have to umbral dash over the wall to get himself to safety here. Oh, they both dash oh, over the wall. Man. Beautifully done by Tactical. And Core JJ in the combo. This just looks great from TL. You know what's really cool about Tactical's performance so far? <laughs> we'll get to that depending on if Meteos decides to fight something. It's like, you look at him in Academy, and you look at his first game in the LCS, and you say, hey, this guy might, like, is he an MF one trick? Like, is he just getting away with MF? Right, it's, I mean, it's his best play in Academy, so. Yeah, and then you look at what TL actually did this game, they banned 380 carries. They said, Let's attack Cody Sun's champion pool. Yeah. They kill Cody Sun after they push him to Ezreal. They have the Callista Taric, and they just run the game with him. They killed him at level one. Tactical oh. has 11,500 gold 23 minutes into the game. The team has definitely supported him. TL is good at supporting their 80 carries, yeah. by the way. Uh, but a lot of this has to oh be my tactical God. and core. Okay, Cosmic Radiance coming down. Final chapter's out. It's going to save him, though. There's the Defy damage from the Taric ultimate, and they're still going to be alive. This could be the point where they get broken apart, though. Brox is still going in, even with those alts going down, and they have to worry about Meteos' cast. Impact's on the top side of the map, and no teleport up. That's what they're probably talking about now as they retreat. And getting a little scary there as Tactical feels like he's a little invincible. Yeah, definitely one of those <laughs> things where TL knows they're up by so much, so they don't respect the rules yeah. of number advantage. Impact was way off in the top lane, helping to shove that wave in, but no harm, no foul. Like, they just traded some ultimates, and now they go back for Drake 3. Doesn't seem like the stage will affect the guy, like, tactical. Comes in, no, or er, you're not seeing any early rends. All the resets yeah. are happening. He's getting the kills, even with the kill on to someday. He didn't have to rend over the wall. They knew the positioning they could get. He's playing it pretty flawlessly right now on three items and a 4-0-1 Callista. Yeah, let's give credit where credit's due. I mean, if this is Doublelift playing Callista and he's at 12,000 gold, 5,000 up against Cody Sun, everyone's like, damn, Doublelift, bot difference, look at this. And yeah. Like, yeah, sure, the team played around him. Um, it's fine, but like Tactical, he is the one pressing the buttons and doing the kitings. <laughs> so Pretty damn good present. Overall, this great team win so far by TL, and especially considering the circumstances of playing on, with Tactical for the first time on stage and looking to close out like a very convincing two a week. I mean, TL has died one time this week. <laughs> As of now, TSM had one kill. Oh my 100 word. Thieves had zero. So true. And they just avoided what could have been the first one there on the bot side. So far, TL 
with those victories on the second half of the split from the second day of week five onto the first day of week six. But the same for 100 Thieves, though, who will pick up this win. And it looks very much so to be in favor of TL if there was any question. Another kill on Demetrios, and that will drop what would be a 50-50 Baron. Now TL singing a lot of praises around the map. Everybody's been doing a big part in this victory so far as they are 8-0. And yeah. this Baron should help put the final touches on the base of 100 Thieves. Yep, slow and steady by TL. It's not like they've rushed to Dragon Soul. They've allowed those Drakes to sit up for a little bit. They're That's not true. rushing to Baron or turret dives, but this is secured. And this is kind of like the other side of scaling if we look at just the way the drafts ended up playing out. Yeah. TL did draft basically three lanes that can and should win and then the three lanes did win. It allowed them to totally run the map early. It made it so Meteos didn't have any places where he could safely gank because every lane would be so a true. disadvantage. So if they get vision on him and Brox is there, it means ganking would actually just kill Meteos. So because of the way Team Liquid played, I do think there was very little for 100 Thieves to do. Does he kill it with Force of Will? Oh my God. Clean. <laughs> force of Will take, scatter the weak kill. And Jensen's out with the blue buff. They have had Meteos, his number, his buff timers, even Impact, seeing him in the jungle on an early push around level three or four, has just let them know where Meteos has been the entire game, and he has not been able to predator in from any fog of war. Again, pushing in from both the left and the right side, TL move up into 100 Thieves' base once again. It seems like Tactical is up there by himself. He is. So they're getting the one three one up. Yeah, I mean, Tactical has double lifesteal items. Yeah, and he can pretty much jump and just rend yeah. anybody if he is in trouble. Fight over to Impact. Has a pretty good death? shield of grit built up. Doesn't use it just yet. Gets away before he does actually have to use it. And he'll use it at half grit. Cast away. They get the teleport out of Ryoma. And they're starting to pull a few resources from 100 Thieves. Yeah. They are desperate to find a kill as their inhibitor turrets start to fall. Top lane tactical still with his eyes poised on the structures. And he will continue onto the inhibitors with his team. Yeah, he really is a weak side top laner. Even when he's in bot lane 27 minutes into the game, he's like, yeah, I'll just take the four man gank, not die. You guys can use all the time just for you. Totally fine. Oh, by the way, I'm back, full health. So. Yeah. Taking the inhibitors down. TL's feeling very good about this match, but going all the way around the horn and cleaning their plate as Impact brings in the last inhibitor turret wave that would take 100 Thieves base down here. Someday going in a bit with one darkened blade, but he's not gonna connect anything on that Q. Cody Sun forward, even his Q proc damage with a W onto Impact isn't that scary, and Impact's gonna be able to stand there and just help Broxa. As Ryoma and the rest of the team stand three as a crowd, someday trying to defend Nexus turrets. There's so much on the plate of 100 Thieves to think about. Yeah, I mean, what? TL is winning. They don't need to rush. They're probably going to get the third and hip. They could just peel back for Infernal Soul as well. If they do do something super crazy, then you have to just point at the Cloud Nine right now. So they're going to come back and win. But you're, <laughs> you're going for broke before you need to. And it doesn't look like they will yeah. even just end hesitate it. towards that type of movement. One Nexus turret going down just sub 30 minutes. It looks like both are down with the Nexus wide Here open. We go. Liquid looking to pick up a win to bring them to six and six. Ryoma moving forward. Cosmic Radiance is down. Ryoma goes down before the Emperor can divide. And 100 Thieves will start to get pulled apart, apart as Liquid takes the victory. Damn. Indeed. Liquid looked good again. This week, Riv. Two days in a row. Against TSM and 100 Thieves, two teams that when you sum their records together, are 500 teams. It's middle of the pack LCS yeah, so far. Up. And TL was 10 kills, one death yesterday. Nine kills, zero deaths today. One of the most dominant kill versus death weeks I feel like we almost have ever had. Like it's very rare that you throw like a no hitter and a one hitter in like back to back games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's effectively <laughs> What TL just did, this game was never close. It was never in question. We were talking about storylines and they get a kill at one minute and 40 seconds. And it felt like the game was just never in doubt after that rip. It's, it, we saw a team that is the four time champions yes, we did. able to do that same thing with a different roster. So the Tigress is going to hear from Broxa as we come back on his first 2 0 week with Team Liquid after this commercial break.
everybody. And if you could hear for yourself, the hype about Broxa is real, not just after that game, but what you've been able to bring to the table. So first off, Jat said during the broadcast that you look more comfortable than you've looked since coming to NA. Is that true? There's no doubt that I felt way more comfortable this week and I feel like I finally settled here in LA, settled with the team and I got completely rid of the jet lag and we're, we're finally starting to make things work as a team, we're improving and it feels great being with this team right now. Well, speaking about, hey, I love the enthusiasm from the crowd out there. Speaking about you making that time to adjust, it's kind of difficult when you're also throwing different players to have to work with each week after coming through in such a heat. So with Tactical, who was your player of the game for this past one, how has it been working with him now that you're two games deep? Uh, I was pretty nervous coming into this weekend, actually, because it feels like this split, we've been so unfortunate, first with my visa issues, then uh, double lift, got really sick and wasn't able to play, but Tactical has been doing a, a really good job. Uh, he, he did really well in scrims, and after seeing that, I was pretty confident in him coming into the games, and yeah, he definitely stepped up. I think he had zero deaths in both games, so very well done, that's for sure. And one of the things is everyone's looking at it thinking you have to do a lot of adjustment to bring in this new player and perform well. But how do you balance that with the long-term goals of improving the split for Team Liquid? Because they almost feel like they're conflicting playing with this roster as opposed to then returning to the normal form. Honestly, I don't really think it matters that much in terms of roster in particular. Obviously, Tactical and Doublelift are different players, but most of all, we just need to find our style, find the way we want to play the game as a team, and that's not going to change really if you just change one single player. You know, It's more of a, a team thing, and we're finally starting to uh, come together regardless of, of roster. So if that is the most important thing, then if you had to think of some key characteristics in finding that style, how would you describe it? Uh, I think the, the many first games was a split, the team was really scared of making making mistakes and right now we are playing more aggressive, we're playing more confident, which is kind of funny because in the first games playing so scared we died so many times and now we barely ever die and we, we play much more aggressive and it, it, you know I think that decisiveness is the most important part. Well, staying alive on the Rift is one way to keep yourself staying alive in the standings. And when we return, we're going to get an interview with Avali and POE, followed by a breakdown of our upcoming match between FlyQuest and Dignitas. Stay tuned. Hey, ultimately, as we get a nice start. Oh my god, Stun's going to go down. There's no way he lives <laughs> there. Ren first. The flash is in the place. I'm coming. Don't worry, don't worry. Can you? There's quite a few things to think about. Minions going towards the mid lane. Someday does have Teleport. Liquid looking to pick up a win to bring them to six and six. Ryoma moving forward. Cosmic Radiance is down. Ryoma goes down before the Emperor can divide. So Josh, you going for our Drive Safe and Safe discount? Yep, using the app Drive and Safe. <laughs> you wanna go? You want to go, bro? Hey, uh, do not mess with my discount. Woo! You can save up to 30%. Let's go! Nice to meet you. Go get him, Tiger. Woo! Sounds like you've got this. Yeah, definitely. Get a discount up to 30% with Drive Safe and Save from State Farm. <laughs> 